that's number 32. And uh, we are going to keep this class uh, around half an hour long because of Ramzan. So let's start. So first of all, if you can see on the screen, this is what we plan to do today. We want to uh, make a Python program, which is which will create a simple text editor for us. Something like this, which you can see here in the screen. Can you see the text editor uh, DUI? Python Yeah. Okay, so this is what we we will we will write a program. We will write a code to uh, create this spider. Uh, this uh, sorry uh, uh, text editor where we can type in uh, text uh, and then we can save it as text file, or we can open uh, existing pre-existing text files and uh, display the contents on this uh, on the screen. So uh, this is what we plan to do today. And again, we will be using the uh, same library that we have been discussing in the previous class. So here is another uh, screenshot of that uh, program, and uh, you can see that we can open file, we can save file, etc. Through that dialog box that we normally use for uh, reading and saving files. So let's start <clears throat> with the program. First, uh, I uh, expect you guys to understand this code, and then I will provide you with the file. And I also shared a Word document on WhatsApp group. I've also shared a Word document on WhatsApp group, and that document contains the tasks that uh, you are supposed to perform throughout the this week. And you have to show that uh, to me in the next class. Have you got that Word document, uh, Ahmed? Yeah. Okay, please share it with Sarim as well as uh, Haitham. So we are starting with the program right now. Please try to understand it and note it down, and then uh, you will be required to <clears throat> uh, run that program in your Spider IDE and then modify it and do perform the tasks that I have shared with you through that Word file. So first of all, the first line is from uh, Py Qt5 dot widgets import Q application Q window Q widget Q box layout Q text added Q push button Q file dialog and from Py uh, Qt5 uh, uh, Pi code import Qt. Now these are the different classes actually that we will import in our program that we will be using in our program. So uh, these are the different classes and some of them are the functions that we uh, import in our program and we use them without uh, doing this we cannot run our program so there is a lot of functionality within these classes that we normally require when we are creating a graphical user interface so the next thing is we create define a class text editor the name of the class is text editor this is uh, what we have done ourselves i mean uh, text editor is the name that i have assigned myself to this class and it is a, a child class of a Q main window. It inherits from Q main window class. If you look, come back to, if you go back to this slide, you can see that we have imported this Q main window, which is a class of this uh, Q widgets. And we have imported that class and we are making text editor our class that will be a child class inheriting from this parent, uh, parent class, Q main window. And then you can see that it's the constructor. In the last class, we have talked about a constructor. What is a constructor? Haitham, can you please tell me? Can you recall what is a constructor? Uh, it creates the self class. Uh, <clears throat> that is what it is doing. Uh, uh, first of all, it's not a self class. Uh, uh, that is what it is actually doing. But uh, I had told you in the last class, in the, every class needs a constructor. So what is a constructor? Constructor, you can uh, uh, search, uh, you can Google it, you can search internet and see what's a constructor in Python. 
The important point is that you should uh, know this. You should be able to answer it and then you should remember it for future. So you can uh, right now you can search about it and see what is a constructor. We have talked about constructor in the last class. Special class method. Yeah, special class method for creating and initializing an object instead of that class. Yes, exactly. So in a class, there is always a constructor. It's a method, special method that initializes the main important functionality of the class. So in our case, uh, this init is the constructor over here. You always have a constructor in the class. It's a method that is used for initialization. So in so this init underscore in itself self basically refers means that we are referring to the same class. We are referring to the uh, um, uh, the object that we are and the instance of the class that we are creating, we are uh, referring to that. And therefore, we write self about it. Normally, we write, write uh, use self in it, uh, unless there is some exceptional need for it, which has not we have not yet seen it. Anyways, so first of all, we use this constructor init method. What it does is that it makes a super call to the init uh, method of the parent class. The parent class is Q main window. And it uh, refers to the init method of that main parent class. And the purpose is that, and since we are making a reference to the parent class uh, method, therefore we use the super uh, keyword like this with it. So what it does is that it initializes uh, the all the main important functionality things that we uh, uh, for, uh, uh, we don't know all of them right now, but that is done. And then after that, a GUI is created. So that initialization takes place when we make a super call to the init method of the parent class. So what's happening right now in this method is that we are doing initialization. And then in the next line, you can see we have self dot dot set widow title simple text editor. Now this uh, uh, puts the title simple text window. So when we will make a program, this thing will be displayed on the uh, top left side of our window, simple text editor. You can write something else like, for example, you can put your name, uh, for example, Hytham editor, etc. That's up to you. So this is what is displayed in the in that uh, top uh, blue, what we call the banner and the top of the uh, window. I can show it to you right now. If you go back here, you can see simple text editor. This thing is the, uh, that that is displayed over there through this line of code. Simple set window title, simple text editor. Then after that, in the next line, you can see we create the central widget. Self dot central underscore widget. This is our widget. It's an object of the Q widget class. We are creating an object or the or an instance of Q widget class. So central widget is a variable. You can say that it's a variable name that we have assigned it. Uh, and self means that we are referring to the same class to this uh, text editor class. And we have created an object. We are creating an object of Q widget class. After that, we say that self central widget, and inside the bracket we write self uh, central widget, as a self set central widget. So uh, that is basically used to uh, uh, it sets the central widget of the main window using the self central widget. So what it does is that first of all we create an object, an instance of the Q widget class, and then we make it the set central widget of our, our uh, GUI main window of the uh, main will we make it the central uh, widget of the main window. Actually thing is that if we come back to this uh, thing again, you can see that there's our this is a window. You can see this thing as a window in that there is a central widget and uh, uh, by using the set central widget, we set that central widget as the central widget of this window. So it central widget means that it's a place where we will be displaying a text editor, this button and the save button. So there's a central widget, a place over this window where we display the different uh, widgets on it. So this is what is being done here in this, in these lines of code. Self central widgets, uh, set central widget, self uh, dot central widget. So central widget is made this central widget of the main window. So that that thing is done in this, these lines of code. This is our first method, and that is used for initialization. Now, what comes next is the uh, set central widget. Uh, we've talked about it. So it's, it's, uh, now let's consider its uh, details. Let's consider it in a more detail. 
Now, what is happening here is that self dot central widget is equal to queue widget. It is creating an object of this uh, queue widget class. This line creates a new widget instance or the object using the queue widget class. Queue widget is basically it's a fundamental building block for the graphical user interface in PyQt, and uh, it basically represents uh, the uh, generic vid widget, and that can hold other user elements like buttons, text, etc., things like that. Now, in this case, what's happening is that we are creating a container widget that I was talking about, a place over the window where the other these widgets are displayed. Container widget that will serve as the main area of our text editor application, and uh, to which we have assigned this name self central widget for a future reference. So what we have done, we have created an object that is an object instance of the queue widget class. And it creates a uh, you know a central widget, a space, or uh, you can consider it as a space where we can put other widgets like the text editor, this white space, and then this open button as save save button. So that thing is done through this <clears throat> in this way by creating an object of the queue widget class, and then uh, we set the set central widget self central. We make this central widget the central widget of the uh, window. Now, what uh, says next is that self central widget set central widget self dot set central widget, and what we are setting we are setting self dot central widget. This line sets the newly created central widget as the central widget of the main application window. What it is does what it is doing it sets this uh, central widget that we have created uh, in the previous line as the uh, a central widget of the application window. In most uh, graphical user interface applications, there is a main window that holds all the visual elements. Like you have seen that window right now. The central widget is a special area within the window that acts as a primary container for the application's content. The central widget is a special area within the main window. Uh, if you refer back to this, so we have a special area uh, area over here that uh, contains these different widgets. So coming back to the same slide again. OK, can you guys uh, easily see the, see the screen? Yeah. Are you guys following me? OK. OK, so what's next? Then we create the layout. We are creating the layout by these two lines of code. Self dot layout is equal to Q box layout where layout is a variable. It's a, you can think of as a, an object of this queue box layout class. Uh, the this line creates a layout object called self dot layout. Layout is the name of it, and self means that it's part of the text editor class, the class that we are working on right, right now. So self layout object is created, and it's an object of this class queue box layout, and it's specifically designed to arrange widgets vertically, stacking them. And so you can see in uh, rather you have seen that I'm not going back to the same slide again. You have seen that uh, DUI, you, there was a space for a place for uh, uh, the text editor. Then below that, there was an open button and then the save button. So these things are arranged in a vertical sort of way. That thing is done by this uh, queue box layout. Now, what it, uh, next thing is being done is uh, uh, VC central widget dot set layout, self layout. This line assigns newly created self layout. The object that we have created to the central widget of the application. Self dot central widget. Central widget is the object that we created in just created in the previous slide, and it was uh, made the central widget of the main window. And then to that we are using this. Uh, you said anything? Okay. OK, so uh, so what uh, what I was saying was that self layout is the object of queue box layout class. And uh, what next we are doing is that self dot central widget dot set layout self layout. So what we are doing right now, we are using the set layout method to uh, um, uh, set the layout of this self layout to the central widget. This layout can be used to organize the main elements of the text editor. So, uh, wait a second. 
Okay, I think it's now better. So now the this line assigns newly created self layout to the central widget of the application. The central widget is the primary container, like uh, we have read that in the previous slide. Slide also, central widget is the main container for the visual elements of the application. By setting the layout to self layout, uh, we ensure that the widgets are added to the self layout. Uh, so what we are doing is that we have created this object of the uh, Q box layout class that is called self layout, and then we are adding that to the central widget through the central widget that we have added using the set central widget, self dot central widget, and then set layout self layout. So that layout is assigned to the central widget. So the um, uh, central widget that we were creating, the different things that we widgets we will put in that uh, central widget, they will be aligned vertically. We will um, the first thing that we will uh, uh, add to it through add widgets. In the next slide, you will see that that will be added on the top below it and you will add the second thing and then below it, you will add the third thing that way. So that thing is done by using this Q box layout class object self dot layout. So we do it to set the different widgets uh, vertically. Got it. So if you use uh, the QH box layout, then that would put uh, it horizontally starting from the left hand side and then moving towards the right hand side. So we are not doing right now that thing we are using vertical set out. It's our choice actually. We decided to do it this way. Now uh, the next thing is create the text edit widget. This widget is uh, is where we will be um, putting the text so that we can edit it. We can display the text so on. So we create this object text edit. Text edit is, an, is our object and it is an object of this Q text edit class. Q text edit class is uh, provided with the PyQt library. So we get that class from there and then we create an object of that uh, particular class and the name is text edit. And then we, what we are doing to this text edit, we are adding this text edit to the layout self dot layout dot add widget add widget method adds that object to the layout. So we add the object to the layout by using this uh, line of code self means that it's part of the text edit class that we are talking uh, working on right now. Layout is the object that we have just created in the previous slide with this self layout. And it's an instance of uh, what? Q widget class, uh, sorry, uh, Q box layout class. And now here uh, we create the object self layout and we use the add widget method. And we add this uh, object of the text edit class, which is self dot text underscore added to this layout. Now this creates the text edit widget for the text editing and adds the text edit widget to the layout. So we create a text edit widget for us and then we add that widget to the layout in this way. These things are necessary to be done then our, our uh, GUI is properly created. Now what comes next is uh, now we want to create the buttons and then add them directly to the layout. So we create the open button. When we create a button, we have to uh, first of all create it this way self uh, dot open underscore button that is the name of the button this variable and we can put some other name as well this is our choice open underscore button is equal to q push button so q push button and then it will display open on it like this uh, we write it like this this string goes into the uh, as the argument of the push q push button so this creates a open button and next we add the Connected to the uh, function that uh, uh, we give it the functionality to it so that when we click that button and uh, uh, so that what happens to it when we bring the cursor over it, we want it to be designed in such a way that we bring the cursor over it and then click it. So we are using this click method over here open button dot click and then we are using the click connect method and it connects this uh, button to the self dot open file method. We have not yet defined this open file method. It is going to be a method uh, that uh, we will uh, short. We will see shortly. We will write code to this open file method and we have not done that yet. What we want to do is that we, we have created a button as a an instance of this Q push button and then to this part button we are adding some functionality that is whenever it is clicked that it get it it gets connected with this self open uh, method so this uh, open method uh, uh, open file open file method is executed whenever the button is clicked so that thing happens to this line 
then after that we add this uh, button to the layout we say that self dot layout dot add widget we add widgets by using this uh, the, in this format first of all we write the name of that layout and then we use the add widget function and then the name inside the brackets we write the name of the uh, uh, that that particular uh, uh, widget that we are talking about self dot open button so what we have done is that we have created a open button we have linked it to it, the method open file and then we have added that button to the layout so this is this has what has happened in this in these lines of code. Now after that, create buttons and add them directly to the layout. And again, uh, these this 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 thing is explained in a bit detail in the few in the next few slides. So uh, uh, we can just quickly go through it. Self dot open button Q push button open. This line creates a Q push button object which represents a clickable button in GUI. We set this uh, its text label as open using the string open. Uh, in the constructor and this button will be used to trigger the functionality of the open text file we assign it to the variable self dot open button for later use so uh, we have seen that uh, and similarly uh, the next line is self uh, dot uh, open underscore button click connect uh, we i've uh, just explained you what this line is doing but but for the purpose of completion let's quickly go through this lines as well now these notes are very useful for you you can uh, refer to them later on, uh, uh, even after this course has finished, and uh, you can refer to them for completing your exercise that uh, assignment that I have assigned you. And you have to submit it to me by the coming Friday, and you can refer to the WhatsApp group to find the word file there where I have assigned you the different tasks. So, Sarim, are you with us online? Sarim. Aitam and Ahmed, are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Sarim? Yeah. Um. Okay, that's good. Good. Uh, now, a cell dot open button dot clicked. Uh, basically, we first of all created an object, uh, the button, and then we add functionality to it, and we do it this way. We add dot clicked method that when it is clicked, and then we uh, use connect method to connect it to some method that in our case, that is open file. We will write code to that open file method, and uh, we will see that in the up next coming slides. Uh, so this line connects the clicked signal of the open button to the self.open function. A signal is an event emitted by the widget when a specific action occurs, like the button is clicked. So we so the uh, that widget emits a signal, in our case, we say we are using this clicked keyword over here. So whenever it is clicked, a signal will be emitted. And then we have the connect method it establishes a link between the signal and the function. When the signal is generated, then what should happen next? That thing is the function is executed. So the function should be executed when the signal is emitted. In this case, whenever open button is clicked, open file, open file function will be called to handle the task of opening the text file. We will write code to that function in a few next few slides. Then after that, we have this uh, self layout add widget self dot open button. Uh, this is uh, these are the same lines of code that we are talking about right now. The open button button. So this is the third line to it, and uh, which adds this uh, button to the layout um, widget by using the add widget widget function. So what it says is this line adds the self dot open button which we created earlier to the self layout. Recall that self dot layout is a vertical layout an object of cube box layout and we have created previously and by adding the button to the layout we essentially are telling the application to include the button as a part of the user interface structure so we make it this part of the user interface structure by using add widget method and then after that similarly we have the save button we create the object uh, save button like exactly like that we put it the label of uh, save to it and then after that uh, we uh, add uh, uh, functionality to it. Uh, it. We connect the signal emitted by the uh, save button whenever it is clicked and it is connected to the save file method, self.save file method. We will add code to this uh, save file method. Uh, we will see that in the upcoming slides. And then after that, we add that uh, self.save button to the layout widget. Now, this is the third item that is added to our uh, central widget. So when we add the text edit that goes on the top below it goes the open button and below it goes the save button. Exactly the way I had shown you in the first slide. 
the way the user interface looks. Now, these are the details of what is happening. We have already, you, you are encouraged to go through this, read it, these, read few, these few slides. Uh, but I've given you the idea of what is actually happening here. So let's move on to over here. Now, this is uh, the open file method. So when the open button is clicked, this part of the code gets executed. And so when we click the uh, open button, this part of the code gets executed. What it says is that, uh, first of all, self means that we are it's part of the same object, the same class that we are talking about right now, that is the text edit. And then we have this uh, file name and then comma underscore is equal to qfile dialog dot get open file name. Now this is uh, uh, this get open file name is actually a method that uh, uh, opens up a file and uh, that file file is basically it, it gets the name of the file from the user and then opens it up. And you can see that that's happening here in the next slide that it is open for the reading purpose and a file object with the name f is created. So the open file function displays the file open dialog box. OK, yeah. let's uh, let me show you that again. If, we, if I go to the in the second slide, you can see that this is this dialog box. This thing is opened by that. When we use that. Uh, OK, so this open uh, file dialog box is uh, opened up. So this happens through. Let's come back to our, okay. So uh, so when we say that q file dialog dot get open file name, that uh, open dialog box opens. So the open file function displays a file open dialog allowing user to select the text file. So that thing is done by this uh, q file dialog dot get open file name. In a file, if a file is selected, it reads the entire contents of that file. So then we open that file over here. And uh, that file is opened over here with open file name uh, for the purpose of reading as F. And then we say F dot read. F dot read method is used to read the content of the file. And that is stored in this text variable. And then after that, we use this uh, text edit dot. If you if we go back to here, what is text edit? Text edit is the object. Uh, let me show you a few slides back that what is text object. This is text object. Text edit is the object of Q text edit class. And the purpose is that it gives us a place where we can uh, edit the text, that white portion. So text edit is the object of Q text edit class. So coming back to the same part of the code again. Okay, here. So there's a, a, what are we doing over here is that we read We are reading the file. We have just open the file. We have got the file name from the first line of code. And uh, this second thing is not used. Therefore, it's discarded. We're using underscore over here. File name is used and then file that particular file is open for reading purpose by this open method. And we have assigned it a name F. Uh, this uh, file object is assigned a name F. Then we say that text is equal to f dot read. Then read method reads from this f, uh, this from this file which is just open for reading purpose. And then we get the data in this text variable. Then we use this text variable over here in this uh, set plain text. So what we are doing is self dot text edit dot set plain text test text. So in the text edit, that is the place where the this text will be displayed. We are setting that uh, up by using this text set plain text. And what to, what is to be set there? The text that in the data that is present in text variable that will be displayed over there on the text in the text field. So that thing is done through this uh, uh, line of code. Now we will see that in a bit detail again, step by step. So first of all, we define the function function definition. We define the function open file self. This defines the function named open file that belongs to the text editor in, uh, in the class. That is why we are uh, we are in, that is indicated by this self uh, variable. So first of all, we define the open file, define a function named open file that belongs to the text editor class indicated by self. So uh, Sarim, can you tell me what is happening over here in this line? Can you please elaborate in your own words what you have understood? Yes, Adam. Um, 
which line in specific? The one at the like. Uh, this line, this number one, first line. I, we are talking about the first line. Mm -hmm. Now I expect you guys to be, uh, you know, uh, be. Uh, I want all of all three of you to be attentive during this lecture. You should be. You should not be doing anything else. Just you should, your focus should be 100% on the slides that I'm uh, showing you. And uh, I won't expect that because that's the only way that you will be learning. Otherwise, otherwise, it's going to be hard for you guys. So, uh, OK, Sarim, tell me what's happening here in this uh, first line that I'm talking about right now. Well, so define open file defines the, the function that this open file then file name. Define f, op f open define open file self. I'm just talking about that. What is it doing? So it's defining a function named open a file. Yes. Uh, and what is the purpose of self? Why do we have to write self in it? What is what does it mean? Because It's because it's referring to the same class that uh, uh, the method is part of. That is text edit. Text edit is the class that we are defining, and the uh, open file is a method of this class, text edit. Therefore, we have written self over here so that the uh, uh, the interpreter does not get confused. That's where we are referring to. So we uh, it needs to uh, needs a proper reference that this method is part of the text edit class. Although it's apparently uh, clear that it's inside the class, it should be part of the same class, but we have to tell that to the compiler interpreter that uh, by you putting this keyword self. OK, now comes the turn of Ahmad. Uh, I, right now I'm not asking, but I will ask you in a short while. Now after that, we are opening file dialog, uh, the box dialog box that uh, where we can see the different files on the in our on C drive sector and we can select any file and then we can open it. So that dialog box is opened by using this uh, Q file dialog dot get open file name. It not only creates it opens a dialog box, but it also gets the file name from there as well. Self open file. And uh, there are a different number of arguments in it. Self, open, then these uh, single double quotes, and then text file or text, etc. Now let's see that one by one. In this line, uses Q file dialog dot get file open to get the to display a file open dialog box. It displays the file this open dialog box first of all. And the arguments you can see that there is self over here, which means that we are referring to the current text editor object. We are referring to the to the, to the uh, current text editor object right now, and then we have the open file and sets the title of the uh, open file sets the title of the dialog box, which is displayed on the top uh, uh, left corner of the dialog box. OK, and uh, I'm not going back to the first slide again, but I hope you can imagine that what I'm talking about right now open file that is displayed on the top of the uh, that uh, open file dialog box. Then after that, this these empty single quotes, they basically tell us that you should remain in the same directory where you are. Uh, uh, empty string, actually we are passing an empty string. So we don't we don't put anything over here, so it does not go to some other directory. It remains where it, it, it is initially right now. Then after that, we have text files dot uh, static start static dot text. This sets the filter for displaying only the text files. Only the text files are displayed in the dialog box, no other files. So we have uh, put a restriction over it. And then after that, the function returns a tuple containing it. It has uh, two variables. One is the file name and other is something else that is not needed. So first of all, the file name is important for us. Full path of the selected file. Its complete path is assigned to this file name. And the placeholder to discard the second return value we don't use the second value right now. We are not using it. So in this and uh, in, in C language or in other languages, we put this thing in a bracket. But in case of Python, we don't need to put it inside a, some bracket. So we are getting the file name and then we are getting something else that we don't need. We only need the file name actually. 
that the file that you have selected its complete path will be stored in filing. So now uh, after that, the, the next thing is read the file. So uh, in that we are using the if uh, condition. If the file name, this is a conditional statement and checks if the file name was actually selected using the dialog box. So if it is true, then uh, what it is does is it uses the if a file name is selected, not empty, the code will within the if block gets executed. So if you have selected a file name, this code will get executed, which is with open file name read as F. Now this line opens a selected file in the read mode. So what it is does, it opens the file name. File name contains the complete directory and open method opens that particular file for the reading purpose. This single quote R means that we are using it for reading purpose and that is opened as a F. So when we have to refer to that file in our code, we will be using this F. F will contain the uh, this, uh, uh, it's a basically a file handle you can think of. So when we want to handle that file for reading, writing purpose, we will be referring to as F. So in the next line, before we go to the next line, let's see this file name. This is the path name of the selected file from the dialog box and F, it's a variable or a file handle and becomes a file object representing the opened file. And then if we go to the next line, when the file is opened, then we do text is equal to F dot read. This line reads the entire content of the open file. So we can read the entire contents by writing this F. F is the file handle or the file object or uh, the object representing the open file. F dot read. Read is the method. It reads the file and stores the data in the text. Now, so Haitham, are you there online? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so tell me please. Uh, What's happening here in text is equal to f dot read? The text is the file. Which one? The words on the file that you have. Open in the previous file line. Yes. The value As R keyword. OK, As it reads that file and what happens to it after reading it? The uh, data that is stored in the uh, in that file is assigned to text. The variable text you can see here that holds yes. stores the data that is there in the file. And uh, what method is used to read the file? Okay, I think which, which method is being R. used here? Yes. R. What? R. What method? No, no, R is a key, key word. that word is uh, used to tell the code to uh, that we are open that open method that we are opening the file for with the intention of reading it. Right now, my question is that which method is used to read the content of the file? It's a very simple question. Text. What? Yes, a text. Okay, hi, Ahmad, you tell me, please. Uh, Ahmad, with open. Open is used to open the file. Okay. Uh, first of all, tell me. Uh, let's just make sense out of it. What 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 we uh, what, what we, we can see on the screen. What is a file name actually? What does file name contain? What is the file name over here? What information does it have? Uh, yeah. First of all, now listen to me carefully. File name contains the direct complete path of the file that there it is in your C drive or D drive or wherever it is. The complete path of the file is that information is stored in file name. OK, and we get that file name from the file open dialog box in the previous slide. We have seen that once we have the uh, complete path of the file, the next thing is that we have to open up that file. We have to open that file. When we open a file, we have to tell uh, Windows and the interpreter that what is our intention, why we want to open the file, and what we want to do with it. With it. So we want to read that file. So we tell that uh, we open the file by using this open keyword over here, which you can see. What are we opening? We are opening some file which uh, its complete path is stored in file name. File name holds the complete path of the C that like for example, you have the C then the column then slash 
and then the uh, uh, greater than sign and after that you have the uh, name of the some folder and then forward slash and name of some other folder and inside you have for example name of the file is yasser.txt so you have that complete thing that complete string is stored in file name so open basically opens that particular file and this r tells us that we are we want to read it so therefore we have uh, signed. and then when then this when this part of the code gets executed it gives us a file object or a file handle f with the information stored in f so whenever we have to refer to the file which we have opened, we don't have to write complete name of the file or the path of the file. We just use this F. So in the next line, you can see that we write text is equal to F dot read. So text is some variable which will hold the data of which is in the file. Right now text does not contain anything, but when this line of code gets executed, uh, text F dot read, F dot read, read is the method that reads the file that accesses the hard drive and gets the data that is there in that particular file and puts that data inside the text variable. So by open method, we open the file for the purpose of reading. Then the actual reading is done by the read method, which you can see in the second line. So and whatever we have read, that data goes into a variable which we have named as text. So uh, text contains the data that uh, uh, we have read from the hard disk. Got it? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Now, are uh, you tell me what is this self dot text underscore edit dot set plain text as text? What is this line of code doing? We will talk about it in the next slide. So, what, what is happening in this line? Self dot text edit. First of all, text edit is an object of the Q text edit class. It's basically an object that uh, where we will be uh, that white portion on the graphical user interface where we will be putting our text. So try to make sense out of this line of code. What's happening here? Self dot text edit set plain text text. No. Yes. Sir. Self would like because the last time I said it, it was like containing it to the text editor, the text edit, which is okay. Uh, a set plain text. It's a method. It what it does is that it takes the text that is the data that is stored in the text variable, and it passes on that data to the text edit object. Text edit object is our object. We have named it. We have created it. And this set plain text uh, ass assigns the data or transfers the data that is there in the text variable to this text edit object so that that data gets displayed on the screen. This is what this is what's happening here in this. Uh, now let's look at it. Uh, setting the text in the text edit self dot text edit set plain text. This line sets the content of the Q text edit widget, the main text editing area. Now, uh, Q text edit uh, is actually uh, this widget is a class, and we have created an object of that class with the name text underscore edit. Text underscore edit is object of this particular class, the Q text edit widget, and the main text editing area to the text that was read from the file. This line sets the content of the Q widget class to the text that we have read from the file, so that the contents of this uh, text edit widget become the data that we have read from the file, or in other words. The data that we have read from the text file that is displayed on that particular area of text. Now, set plain text method takes the text as an argument and displays it in the text edit widget. So, uh, I think it's clear from what is uh, it's written here. The text, the set plain text method takes the text as an argument and displays it on the text edit widget. So this is uh, this was uh, the opening the file. Now similarly, we have the second function save the file, and here you can see that uh, uh, save file function retrieves the text content from the text edit area. It first of all gets the uh, it's the reverse of what we have just seen that, and that thing is done through this text edit to plain text method. So what a to plain text method is it whatever is there on the uh, that uh, text 
ke edit area it assigns that uh, to this stores that information in this variable named text so whatever is in the uh, text area of the text edit widget text edit text underscore edit it assigns that value stores that value in this variable text so text save text file function retrieves the text content from the text edit area it uh, displays a file saving dialog and then you can see that we once we have placed that uh, data in the text variable the next thing that happens is that uh, we open up the file save uh, dialog box just like we were doing for the file open dialog box right now we are using the file save dialog box the same way q file dialog dot get save file name previously if you refer to this previous slide we have a, a get open file name get open file name gets the name of the file that is to be opened whereas this uh, over here get save file gets the name of the file which we want to save or create self save file we will see about it these arguments in the next slide so it returns a file name complete path to the file name in which is stored in file name and the, what happens next is that if file name is a, it's a file name has been selected and it's a valid name then in the next line you can see with open we open up a, open up that file for the writing purpose we write w over here because we want to write to it as f again the file handle in this case is f and then in the next line we use this method f dot write text so whatever data was inside text that is passed on to write method and then write method actually saves the content on the hard disk so the f dot write method stores that data on our hard disk so this is what's happening here now let's look at it in one by one because these are very important uh, functions you are actually learning to uh, open file and create file so it's going to be really helpful for you you will be able to open file read file write to file and uh, the exercise that i have assigned to you that's very important you have whole week in front of you and try to follow those steps okay now let's uh, see a uh, look at it a bit in a bit detail uh, first of all we define the function define save file self defines the function named save file and it belongs to the text editor class and created by the self that it's part of the same class uh, then getting uh, getting text from the text edit text self edit underscore to plain text this line retrieves the current text from the q text edit widget where we have whatever typed there or displayed anything it gets the data from there and it stores that data in the text variable this variable text the two plain text method of q text returns a string containing all the text entered or edited by the user in the widget so whatever we have done in that area text area that thing is uh, uh, obtained by two plain text and then that is assigned to the that data stored in this text variable after that we open the saving file dialog box just like uh, i uh, we have seen that in i've talked about it just a few minutes back so inside we are using this get save file name method in the arguments of this method we have self means that we are referring to the, to the text editor object then we have uh, uh, i mean we are passing we are referring to the same slide that we are uh, same class that we are uh, right now uh, uh, working in then after that we have save file save file sets the title of the box that uh, we want to save the file the thing that is displayed on the top uh, left uh, of the um, that ba banner of the dialog box and then this uh, these two empty uh, single quotes they uh, tell us that uh, remain in the current directory don't switch the directory and then we can of course uh, by our choice we can switch that up uh, and that's no problem actually and then after that text files static dot text this means that only the text files that are presently present in that particular directory they will be shown there in that dialog box so uh, ahmed can you please tell me what is in the file open dialog box actually what do you understand by it yes ahmed uh it says to um get the save files name when we want to save a file for example what happens in 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 word or in notepad or in some other uh, app you want to save a file so what happens when you uh, say that i want to save a file uh, like for example 
drive. Now this is my notepad. I go here, file, and then I say save. You can see this thing. This yeah. on the screen, save as. This this is a saved file dialog box. So this is what we want to display in our text box. When we write this, these lines of code, Q file dialog get save file name. We actually were doing this thing. We when we click the save, this dialog box opens. And from here, you can only see the text files. Those files which have an extension of .txt, they are shown over here, and no other files. So when I write this thing, this becomes Caleb data. That is the file name. That file name is passed on to this variable file name. It's complete directory from the C or D drive or whatever. So that thing, this is what happens by this line of code. And this is exactly what it is doing, that it is means the current directory shows the text files, and then it gives us a file name that is stored in file name. So this thing is done by this line of code. Got it? Yeah. OK. So now next we get the file name and then there's something else as well. That is also written by these this uh, these line, this line of code, which is discarded. We don't use it. That is a placeholder to discard the second written value. Uh, we don't need it. Therefore, it has a purpose, but right now we are not concerned about it. So now what next? Now this uh, uh, writing to the file. Once we get the file name, then after that, if the, it's a valid file name or if we have got the file name, then this if condition becomes true, and then it opens up that particular file. It opens a file to the intention of writing to it. This uh, uh, W, what does this W tell us? Do you want to write in the file? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And what is this F? In the file. Open file name and then W as F. So what's an F here? As a file. It's written over here. This variable becomes a file object representing the opened file. So we will refer to the open file as F. So with open file name for the purpose of writing, we open it as F. So it's a, basically a file handle you can think of. It's a variable that becomes the file object. It's representing the file. So when in the later part of the code we want to refer to that file, we use f. So in the next line, you can see f dot write and bracket we have text. So we are referring to the file that we have opened for the purpose of writing f dot write. Now this write method, this write method basically writes uh, whatever data that we have passed as argument to this uh, method which is inside this variable text that is stored on the hard disk. Write method stores that data on the hard disk. So we say f dot write text. This line writes the content of the variable text, which holds the text from the queue text added widget to the open file using the write method. So write basically write method writes that particular data that is in text on the hard disk. Where does it write? It writes to the F, F is the file that we have opened for the purpose of writing. So this is what happens. So we basically create a file with the, the particular name that we have given to it, and it stores that data on the hard disk with an extension of uh, .txt, .txt as a text file. So the, what this is what is happening here. So I hope this makes sense. Does it or you, you people are not following it? Yeah. Are you guys following it? Yes, Sarim and uh, yes. Haitham and Ahmed. Are you following me or you're not following me? Are you understanding uh, uh, this? I'm yes. following. OK, what you guys need to do is you have to refer to this, the lecture slides again. And I have assigned you an assignment in which there are a certain number of tasks that you have to follow step by step. And uh, you have to do it within this whole week. And in the next meeting, before the next meeting, you have to uh, submit it to me. Uh, it's your assignment. And I also recall, remember, uh, uh, Salim, you have not presented your project. So what you plan to do about it? You, what you can do is you can make a short video explanation of your project, that what your project is doing, and you can send the presentation to me through uh, to my email address, and then I can grade you on the basis of that, OK? Uh -huh.
and please do it uh, within this week and uh, you guys also have to submit this particular sign now uh, let me just quickly go through this last part of the code it simply says that uh, it basically uh, is telling the program that there are certain shortcut keywords uh, control o when we press control o it will open a file open up a file and when we uh, press control s then it, that is used to save the file these are the short uh, sh the, those keys that we normally use so it's an additional functionality in our program we use this define this method key press event and sell for an event. What it does is that it uh, event dot modifiers uh, is if it is equal to control modifier, then uh, it, it means that we are pressing control and then some other keyword with it. And in that case, if it is in this in that case, if it is O, then it uh, calls this open file method. If it is S, then it calls the save file method. So uh, let's look at it a bit a bit detail quickly. First of all, we define the key press event, defines the function named uh, key press event that belongs to the text editor class. After that, uh, it event modifiers. Uh, basically, what it is this, uh, that it, uh, this line checks if control key is pressed along with some other key or not. So event dot modifier, is it equal to QT dot control modifier? Uh, if it is so, if the, we have pressed uh, the control key with, along with some other key, then the next part of the code gets executed. Uh, then we check it. Uh, QT control modifier is a constant uh, from the PyQt core module that represents the control modifier keys. Uh, so actually, if we have added a little bit of additional functionality to our code here. The condition checks if the value returned by the event modifier includes control modifier flag or not. So um, in simple words, uh, what it does is that it when, when we press control and then we press some other key with it, this part of the code gets uh, triggered. And it simply, if we press control O, then it opens up the file. Uh, it opens up the uh, open file method. When we press control and along with S, it opens up save uh, file part of the program. So uh, we have added this add-on functionality i urge you guys to go through it and try to understand what i have written over here and if you find any difficulty in it you can consult me that uh, i will explain it to you so i hope uh, you uh, you guys will be able to follow it well, at least try it okay you read this file again and don't just uh, leave it like that okay try to read it then we go to the end part of the program. It's the same thing that we have been doing here. We are actually creating the objects. First of all, uh, if uh, our program is executed called from the main window, then uh, what it does is that it creates an app. App app is the application object. And then after that, it creates an object of the text editor class. And then we use uh, the window, which is the object of text editor class dot show so that uh, GUI gets displayed. And then after that, we have the app dot exact. We assign, we use the execute method or, uh, uh, and then we uh, use the execute method and we run our application app object that belongs to two application. So that, uh, that application keeps on running until we end it. So there are a few things that you must note we are not using, we have uh, rather not imported the system li uh, library in our code. Without even that, we are able to run that. And it's slightly different uh, to the code that we have done uh, is considered in the previous class. Try to compare that with that and see what are the other differences. Now, I leave this thing to you. Uh, please uh, do it. Compare it with the code that we have seen in the next previous class. And uh, uh, we are done with the, uh, today's class, and I've assigned you a few tasks, and I expect you guys to uh, finish those tasks. Let me show it to you as well. Okay, can you guys see my screen right now? Yes. yes. Okay.
Okay, Hitam, I think you are quite tired right now. I'm ending with the class. Just uh, quickly, go, I'm going through the tasks quickly. Self-study tasks enhance your text editor. Uh, enhance your text editor that uh, the text editor that the file that I will send you uh, send to you guys through WhatsApp. You have to modify that and add uh, different features to it. And in order to do that, what you have to do is that uh, you, this is your plan at a sort of you know rough plan. It depends on you how you will be following it. Uh, you will first of all run the code. You will experiment, try opening different files, etc. You will understand the code. We have considered the understanding of the code as well. Then you will uh, the font control. You will uh, learn about Q font, and you will add a size font size buttons to it. And then you will connect, add the connecting controls to it. Then you will add the for different formatting Q, using the Q text chart format. You have to research about uh, this uh, in PyQt what it is in its documentation, how you can change the formatting, etc. Then the formatting functions and then uh, uh, using the Q text cursor, you will explore what it is used, why we use it, etc. And then you will consider the text colors, Q color dialog as well, and add in the different color buttons. And then uh, day five is saving enhancements. And uh, then Similarly, you will practice and explore experiment with the features. Think about additional features you'd like to add to it. Explore more about it and you will go through the tips as well. Now you have this whole complete. This will keep you busy for one week. I hope you guys can find time for it. Yes or no? Would you be able to find time for this? these tasks? Yes. Okay, you have to sp spend not more than uh, one hour daily or maybe a half an hour daily and uh, it will just take half an hour for you and each day make a checklist make a take out a printout of this this document and just take it and uh, just uh, mark it that it's done and uh, on day, uh, in this way uh, each day you will be working half an hour and by the end of the week hopefully you will be done with it and then you will email that uh, code to me and it's screenshots as well that it is in a running condition. Now let me just quickly show you uh, this code that I will share with you. Okay, can you guys right now see my GUI? That uh, editor. Can you see it? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, okay this is my editor. It's very simple and basic. I can open any text file, for example, dict.txt, and whatever is that there in the it's displayed over here. And if I want to edit it, I can save it uh, as well with any file name at like I like, for example, Yasser 2, and I save it. Now, if I want to open it, Yasser 2, it will have that information, that text in it. So the text editor is working right now. So you have to add uh, more functionality to it. That is actually your assignment and you have to follow those tasks. OK, so any questions so far? Anything you want to say, comment, ask anything? No. OK, so thank you very much. Please uh, kindly uh, put some effort on the uh, tasks that I have assigned you. OK, so we end our today's session over here. OK, for the office, have a nice week. Okay, good afternoon.